Hello, my name is Brian Little and I'm an ophthalmologist from the UK. I'm delighted to give a brief introduction to this video of the month, which has been produced by Drs. Jiri Chendelin and Nina Ondova from Prague in the Czech Republic. It is titled Cataract Surgery in the Presence of Compromised or Missing Capsular Bag. You might reasonably expect from that title that you'll be watching a series of clinical cases and intricate surgical procedures with difficult to see suturing and tunneling techniques and variable quality video recordings. You couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, what you actually see is the use of a superbly designed and constructed large-scale model of the anterior segment of the eye. This is used to carefully and clearly demonstrate many of the advanced surgical techniques currently practiced to manage these complex and extremely challenging cases. After each technique has been shown with consummate clarity using the model, you are then taken through carefully edited surgical video whose details now make clear sense through previous demonstration in the model eye. This combined approach makes for an extremely powerful teaching tool by the effortless dovetailing of theory and practice through the use of Dr. Chendlin's larger-than-life model eye. Hopefully, this model will soon become commercially available so that we can all benefit from its unrivaled effectiveness as a training tool. So, enjoy the video and experience for yourself how the intricacies of these surgical techniques are so beautifully and clearly demonstrated. Enjoy the video. We created a model of the eye in 10 to 1 ratio, which allows us to demonstrate and practice various operating techniques, including preliminary testing of new methods. In the previous part, we explored surgery of the iris. Now, simulation of the capsule was added to the model, so that solution to capsular damage or missing capsule could be demonstrated. Capsular tension ring is perfect solution to zonal damage in a limited sector. It can be implanted by forceps or an injector. If a zonular damage occurs with capsular defect, we risk leading the ring out of the capsule using the traditional technique for ring implantation. There are several techniques to prevent this and to lessen the strain on the remaining zonules as well. Fishtail technique can lead to deformation in some rings. Capsular tension ring can be led by a hook. When leading the ring with a suture, the ring can be mobilized repeatedly. And by keeping the suture, the risk of dropping the ring is lowered in complicated surgery. We added a knot creating a loop to this technique and leading the loop by a Kuglan hook facilitates manipulation with the ring. We can use iris hooks for temporary capsular support. However, there is a risk of traumatization of capsule and capsular axis. Capsular hooks which stabilize the equator are more suitable to support the capsule. Using capsular hooks allows for easy continuation in capsular axis, which is not stressed by tension thanks to equatorial stabilization. Ahmed segment stabilizes equator and allows both temporary fixation and permanent sclera fixation. With extensive zonular damage, we have to decide whether to preserve or to extract the capsule. If we decide to preserve the capsule, we use implants for sclera fixation. The Chioni rings are used to stabilize the capsule equatorially. The Malugin's ring is a modification which facilitates the implantation by using an injector. In extensive zonular damage, we can use Chioni ring with two fixation hooks. We can stabilize capsular edge by a C anchor. Here is demonstrated a sclera fixation of an anchor by a sclera suture up interno. We appreciate stabilization of a capsular edge by a C anchor, mainly in fibrotic capsules, where implanting a ring is very difficult. Interesting possibility of lens fixation in case of zonular damage represent beans in back in the lens intraocular lenses. Extensive damage of poor visualization of the posterior capsule with intact anterior capsular axis is an ideal opportunity to implant a three-piece lens in the sulcus with optic capture. If the damage to the posterior capsule, for example during implantation, does not allow for a stable implantation inside back, we can perform reverse optic capture. The haptics are posterior to the anterior capsule 
and the optic is prolapsed anteriorly through anterior capsulotomy. Execution may be more difficult than standard optic capture. Mainly in single piece lines, it is important for the capsulorexis to be smaller and well centered. What should we do if the capsule is missing completely? Implanting angle supported anterior chamber lines is the most simple and regarding complications comparable with other methods. This is not recommended if the expected fixation of lens is more than 20 years because of risk of endothelial decompensation. Iris claw lenses can be fixated on iris inside anterior or posterior chamber. You have to remember to use different A constant for calculation. In retropupular fixation, the lens is implanted reversed with the convex side facing the retina. Retropupular implantation can be facilitated by using a special forceps. If you perform retropupular implantations rarely, our method of a lens hardness can be helpful. Prolonged preparation of the hardness is rewarded by a precise positioning and the feeling of safety. In conservation of the iris just after placing the whole lens retropupillary allows better centration of the lens and less iris traumatization. When fixating the haptics of three-piece lens by suture to the iris, we keep the optic of the lens anterior to the iris and we place it retropupillary after finishing both sips or slip knots. In sclerofixation by suture, the knots must be either buried or placed under a flap. Flap can be constructed from limbus. Fixation by an up internal suture was shown in ASI anchor fixation. Now we will demonstrate one of the up external suture fixations. We can lead one or two sutures inside the eye. The haptics are fixated by a knot as in a model or by a loop. In this case the sutures are tied under flap constructed from limbus. For fixation by Goratex, we suggested a method with tying inside a scleral tunnel constructed parallel to the limbus. The sutures can be let up external by a needle or up internal. Tying can be done by sips or slip knot or by standard knot. Compared to the limbus-based flap, we assume better control over needle passage and tension while tying knots. Shariat begins his sutural fixation by a straight sclerotomy using 24 gauge needle. From the external part is created a limbus parallel tunnel 2 to 3 mm long. The haptic of three-piece lens is externalized using 25-gauge forceps and pulled through the tunnel. After placing both haptics, the tips are placed inside the tunnel. In sutural's intrascolar fixation, the haptics can be either inserted freely, fixated by glue, or newly by enlarging the tips by melting them. In this technique, the haptics are externalized using needles, and the tips are melted by cauterization without directly touching them. Enlarged tips of the haptics are then inserted inside scleral tunnel. Manipulation with the haptics is not simple. It would be helpful, for example, if the trailing haptic were significantly longer and could be externalized through scleral tunnel before implanting the lens optic. We hope we managed to summarize main operating techniques used in capsular and zonular damage